All right, now we expand our knowledge of the relationship between moles of one substance in the balanced equation and moles of another substance in the balanced equation. Okay, so we are expanding that conversion to something more practical. So in the laboratory, you're using grams of substances, not moles. Uh, moles is not something you measure, you measure mass, okay? So we will use grams, and then that's going to expand our conversions into multiple steps. So the schematic is very helpful in understanding uh, what conversions are happening. And you need to understand the actual names of things to hear what I'm saying. So if you're not understanding the vocabulary of the description I'm giving you, you need to write these down and learn the vocabulary so we are on the same page as far as communication. So if we have moles of one substance, we can convert to moles of another substance in the balanced equation using the mole to mole ratio or stoichiometric factor as a conversion factor between the two, okay? Um, this does not imply one mole of B and one mole of A. You would have to check the balanced equation to have the proper ratio here. This is just a generic expression saying that is what you'll be using, um, but this is from the balanced equation, okay? The mole of A is the amount that you are either given in the problem or that you find in the first step. Okay, so that mole that you're given is not plugged into this ratio. This ratio, again, is the stoichiometric conversion factor that you're using from the balanced equation. Okay, and we've done that already. Let's just back up a minute and look at the example problems <clears throat> that the book has. So in this case, we use the relationship between the mole of sulfuric acid and the mole of magnesium nitride from the balanced equation. This is where the four came from. This is where the one, because there's nothing there, it's a one. This is where one came from. To convert the 3.5 moles of magnesium nitride given in the problem, to get the moles of sulfuric acid that is consumed in this process. And then further, what they do is then convert to moles of magnesium sulfate produced, again, using the mole to mole ratio from the balanced equation, the three, what was in front of magnesium sulfate. And Further, the other product, in this case, they have the same stoichiometric coefficient. So language skills, again, stoichiometric coefficient, the same number in front when it was balanced, okay? Um, so that this mole amount is the same as this mole amount. So that is the conversion in this scheme between A and B, and A and B can be anything that's in the balanced equation. A does not have to be a reactant. B does not have to be a product, okay? But as I said, it's going to be important that we use something that's practical. In the laboratory, we don't measure moles, we measure mass, okay? And then we use molar mass, that thing that you go to the period, periodic table to add up, um, to convert from grams of one substance to moles of that same substance. It is worthwhile to spend quite a bit of time on this diagram to make sure that you understand the vocabulary, because if you don't understand the vocabulary, you're going to mix up grams of a substance with molar mass, because they both use grams in their um, units, or you're gonna mix up moles of a substance with the mole to mole ratio from the balanced equation. So you need to know what each individual thing is that I'm talking about, 
okay? So grams of A can be converted to moles of A, the same substance, using the molar mass of A, which is what you get from the periodic table. Remember, molar mass is not the same as mass, okay? Mass is something that would have to be given. Now, once you have moles of the substance you start with, you can convert to moles of the substance that you are, you know, trying to figure out, okay? Now, once you have moles of the substance you're trying to figure out, um, so the second substance, then you can convert to grams of that substance using its molar mass. So this over here was the molar mass of A, over here is the molar mass of B. In this case, you're dividing by the molar mass, using the reciprocal, or in this case, you're multiplying by the molar mass. It depends on what you're trying to cancel and what you're trying to keep. Okay, so this is the general scheme in going from gram A to mole A to mole B to gram B. Okay, so here's an example of an unbalanced equation. They balance it here, and they're asking you, um, <clears throat> knowing that 54.6 grams of CO2 is produced in this equation, how much HCl was consumed and what mass in calcium chloride is produced. So it's a two-part question. So in the first part, they're asking you to convert from grams of CO2 to mole of HCl. And then they're asking you to go from grams of CO2 all the way to grams of calcium chloride. So going back to our scheme, the first part of the question is just asking you to go from gram of A to mole of A to mole of B. The second part of the question is asking you to go to gram, from gram of A to mole of A to mole of B to gram of B. So this scheme is incredibly important that you understand what's going on. So in going to mole of um, <clears throat> the first part of the question, mole of HCl, you go first from grams of CO2 to mole of CO2 using the molar mass of CO2. So this is from the periodic table. You have to know how to add that up. So 12 plus 16 plus 16 is 44.01. The 01 comes from the two decimal places that I didn't include in my description. Anyway, so 54.6 grams of CO2, the grams will cancel and you're left with mole of CO2. Now, you don't want mole of CO2, you want mole of HCl. So mole of CO2, from the balanced equation, you have two moles of HCl for every one mole of CO2. So that would double the number of moles of HCl um, that you would need to produce that much CO2. Now, if we're going to calcium chloride, the mole to mole ratio of calcium chloride is the same in the balanced equation. So we already calculated mole of A from our scheme. Now we're going to, this time, mole of B, and our B is going to be calcium chloride, not HCl, because we've already solved part A of the question. We're in part B. So mole of CO2 gives us the same number of moles of calcium chloride. And then the moles of calcium chloride solved here can then be converted to grams of calcium chloride using the molar mass of calcium chloride. Now this is a lot of steps and you've seen before where I put everything together in one. So let's look at the single step computation. So this is the full calculation where you have three conversion factors down here. So let's look at this. 54.6 grams of CO2 can be, converted to, can be converted to mole of CO2 using the molar mass of CO2. So grams of CO2 would cancel and now you have mole of CO2. Then the mole of CO2 can be canceled to leave you with mole of calcium chloride. From the one to one stoichiometric factor from the balanced equation. Again, you need to talk to your 
each other to learn this language that I'm using in the description. Okay, it's just vocabulary words you need to learn. So finally, if I have mole of calcium chloride uh, from the stoichiometric factor, because I have canceled the mole of CO2, I can then convert to grams of calcium chloride using the molar mass of calcium chloride. The molar mass, again, is obtained from going to the periodic table and finding the mass, individual molar masses of calcium and chloride and adding them together, okay? So I'm just multiplying everything across the top and dividing everything at the bottom. So it's 54.6 times 111 divided by 44.01, and that yields to three significant figures, 138 grams of calcium chloride. Okay, so we're going to need to be able to apply this scheme in many different cases. Again, this is using the stoichiometric factor to convert from moles of A to moles of B, and then applying our previous conversion skills, going from grams of one substance to moles of another or going from moles of a substance to grams of a, that same substance, okay? So grams of one to moles of the same thing is dividing by molar mass. Going from moles of one substance to moles of the same thing is multiplying by the molar mass. And the mole to mole ratio, again, the number of moles in this ratio are from the balanced equation. You don't change those numbers. You look at the balanced equation. You get the number in front of the substance.